Islands. Except I'm not in the Faroe Islands. The B1M team and I have only made it as far as a hotel here in Copenhagen. That's because yesterday, having got up very early to fly from London to Copenhagen and worked a day in the airport and then expecting to go from Copenhagen to the Faroe Islands, everything got cancelled because of the weather and it doesn't look like anything's going to the Faroe Islands anytime soon. Now, I promise you, this little travel nightmare is actually relevant to the underwater tunnels on the Faroe Islands that we're going to tell you about. Now, when you think of the world's most impressive tunnels, the Faroe Islands might not be what immediately jumps to mind. But to connect 18 rugged bits of land formed from volcanic rock, they've had to get pretty good at tunneling. Now, they're working on their biggest project yet. This so-called jellyfish roundabout is a work of art in its own right. It's a critical piece of infrastructure that's cut travel time between two of the most populous islands from more than an hour to just 15 minutes. Welcome to one of the world's most impressive and remote construction projects. Life here in the Faroes moves slowly. But the weather moves quickly. Some people say you can experience all four seasons in a single day. That can make getting around a little difficult, or even impossible, as we learned just trying to get there. The Faroes are known as the land of maybe. Now you know why. The Faroe Islands sit between Norway and Iceland in the North Sea. They're a self-governing nation that's technically part of Denmark. In all, its population of just over 50,000 people and some 70,000 sheep is spread out across 17 habitable islands. Up until relatively recently, the only way to travel between them was to take a boat, but the water out here can sometimes be a little bit rough. Rolling waves aside, the journey itself can take up to half a day depending on when you catch the ferry or if it's even running. In the 1970s, a bridge was built connecting the two most populous islands, turning that half-day journey into just a few minutes. But it was back in the 1960s that the Faroe Islands began its tunnelling boom. With a little help along the way from the Norwegians, the Faroese got really good at digging tunnels. In the last 60 years, they've built 20 through narrow fjords, steep mountains, hills and the ocean. Today, there are over 50 kilometres of road tunnels for just 53,000 people. That's more than one metre of tunnelling for every person who lives here. Now, the Faroes is expanding its tunnelling system even further, with two undersea tunnels. It's the biggest investment it's ever made, with a combined price tag of nearly 700 million US dollars. It's just sort of surreal how it changes the geography and places that have always and in our minds been, been separated by at least 50 minutes all of a sudden are separated by 10 minutes or, or less. It's strange and, and, and wonderful. The Estroy Tunnel opened in 2020 and runs for 11 kilometers to connect the islands of Stremoy, where the capital is located, and Estroy. The second Sandoy Tunnel is set to open in 2023, connecting the sparsely populated villages of Sandoy with the wider infrastructure network in Stremoy. The Estro Tunnel will shorten the distance for a big part of the population how to commute to the capital, Torshavn, where all the public services are, hospital and everything else. A lot of the export from the Faroe Islands are going to and from Torshavn, so investments like these are very important for the Faroe Islands, for how you can arrange and have an efficient uh, society. Taita is leading the construction of the latest undersea tunnels, which are part of a slow transition in how people get around here. Rather than driving cars onto ferries, now they can simply drive under the water. The Estroy Tunnel connects more villages with the mainland and the island's main infrastructure. Travel times to the capital are reduced from more than an hour to mere minutes, and adding in some epic construction makes an already stunning drive even more breathtaking. The tunnel itself is the second longest in the world that you can drive through, and they've spared no detail. On the eight-minute journey beneath the sea, you can listen to a radio station specially programmed to enhance your experience. And of course, there's that roundabout. 72 meters below the surface, you'll find this giant pillar of colorful rock that apparently looks like a jellyfish. 
The deepest part of the tunnel sits 187 meters below the water's surface. The team used a drill and blast method to excavate the area. Essentially, a hole is drilled into the rock below the water, the explosives are dropped into the hole, and then the rubble is cleared out. When we are drilling the project, there are around 140 people or something like that connected to the project. But not everybody are working at the same time. The project is running 24 hours, which means that there are eight drilling teams, one in each side, and then two are sleeping and four are off. To make sure no water gets into the tunnel, the rock is sprayed with concrete to create a solid lining. There's also a system of gates, pumps and pipes that lead any rain or surface water away from the cars before then pumping it back out into the nearby fjord. In all, construction of the 10.5km tunnel took four years to complete. That's nothing compared to some projects in cities like New York and London, which can take far longer. Of course, there are far less people living above a tunnelling site in the Faroes, but there are some lessons to be learned here in how to build tunnels quickly and efficiently. We are a small country, a small society, where decisions can be taken quite quickly. That's one reason why we can do projects like this. And also that we have good experience doing tunnels. We are building tunnels based on Norwegian standards, Norwegian technology. The Estroy tunnel is expected to carry thousands of vehicles every day, and it'll cost a pretty penny at around 25 US dollars or $10 with an annual pass. But that toll revenue is going to be used to cover the cost of construction, maintenance and future tunnel projects. The second tunnel, on the other hand, is expected to carry just 310 vehicles a day across 22 kilometers, making it the longest car traffic subsea tunnel in the world. And it comes with a price tag of nearly 500 million US dollars. It's a huge investment per capita, substantially more than other European tunneling projects. But this isn't a densely populated nation, and it's going to make a huge difference for the people it does benefit. Right now, you have to take a ferry to get from Sandoy to the mainland. The new underwater tunnel will make a 64-minute commute just 16 minutes by car. For the people in, in Sandoy, which has seen population decline well, since the, the 80s, I think, it means that the rest of the country cares about them or listens to their wishes. It's a part of the whole seeing the country as, as one small unit and connecting it as one small unit. It's a big honor to work up on a project like this and it's also a very big responsibility because it is an investment of around 7,000-7,500 euros per inhabitant in the Faroe Islands. So if you compare it to, to any one other country, it's an unbelievable big project. It's worth noting that I'm not the first good-looking British man not to make it. The islands feature in the James Bond movie No Time to Die, but Daniel Craig was never on the actual islands due to a logistical challenge. For a quiet nation of just 50,000, the Faroe Islands is investing a lot of time, money and skills into its infrastructure. And it's paying off. These new tunnels can literally make the difference between getting to work, seeing family or even reaching a hospital, or being stuck on the other side of stormy waters. With a further two tunnels now in the works and another 14 on the drawing board, the Faroe's tunnelling boom isn't slowing down anytime soon. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, guys. I haven't enjoyed making it. So if you could uh, give it some views, share it to your friends, and at least subscribe to the B1M, I'd really appreciate it. Hopefully one day soon, we will bring you a video on the ground from the Faroe Islands.